Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday the 23rd of October. India bridge strong positions, deep divides in G20 summit, says Jay Shankar. Pakistan's ex-PM Imran Khan indicted in official secrets case. And devotees in India, Nepal throng temples to mark auspicious Mahanapmi. Now for all the details. Heaping praise on the G20 summit's success, India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Monday said the G20 bridged strong positions and many people were surprised after witnessing India bridging the deep divides between countries. Addressing a gathering of envoys at the G20 tree plantation ceremony in New Delhi, Jay Shankar said G20 was a prominent topic of discussion at the UN General Assembly in New York and that many countries took particular satisfaction at the permanent membership of the African Union in the G20 grouping. He said that overall there was a sense in global diplomacy that the summit under India's presidency actually delivered very substantively on what were the most pressing issues of the day and made India far more connected with the world. Uh, about three weeks ago, uh, I was in New York for what's the annual gathering of diplomacy, the United Nations General Assembly. Uh, and I must share with you that uh, the G20 was uh, very much uh, the subject of conversation. Uh, a lot of people were still a little surprised that uh, the G20 could bridge what were uh, strong positions and deep divides. And in an another blow for Pakistan's jailed former Prime Minister Imran Khan, a court on Monday indicted him and his former Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi in an official Secrets Acts case ahead of a general election expected in January. The charge is related to a classified cable sent to Islamabad by Pakistan's ambassador in Washington last year, which Khan is accused of making public. However, Khan denies that and says the cable was proof of a U.S. conspiracy to oust him in 2022. Khan has also been barred from politics for five years. Meanwhile, PMLN Party Supremo and ex-PM Nawaz Sharif returned to Pakistan this past weekend after four years of self-imposed exile in London to kickstart his party's campaign for the election. The 73-year-old politician addressed thousands of supporters in a rally and said he just wanted to serve his nation and see it prosper. Sharif's biggest challenge will be to wrestle back his support base from Imran Khan, who despite being in jail, remains popular. And moving on, a series of protests have erupted in POK with growing unrest over inflation, unfair taxes and crackdown on people expressing their dissent. A report. Scores of local women and lawyers in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir recently held a demonstration over a range of issues, including inflated electricity bills, wheat crisis and denial of basic amenities. Locals lament they have long endured discrimination and second-class treatment and they have been bearing the brunt of Pakistan's failed economic policies, with no respite in sight. The region has witnessed a series of protests in recent months. मतीन की जो हमारी यहाँ पे पिछले एक दो महीने से जो ऐतजाली तहरीक चल रही है, जाल माना लोड शेडिंग, बिजली के जो बिल हैं, जो बिल यहाँ पे 300-400 आता था, वो आज 4000 से 10000 वो आ रहा है। उसके बाद यहाँ पर आटे के वाले से मैं बात करूँ कि पिछले दो तीन दिन से ये रूटीन है कि जो आटे का बैग 1700 स Several locals were injured as police bait and charged upon them, while some of them were also arrested for speaking out against the government's policies. The women protesters demanded their immediate release. <laughs> Thank 
हम निकले ना बार While coffins carrying the bodies of four Nepali students killed in Israel were brought to Kathmandu on Sunday, two weeks after attacks by Hamas militants that have killed more than 1,400 people, mainly civilians. At least 10 Nepali nationals were killed in the attacks. Bodies of the other six would be repatriated in a few days, officials said. The Nepal government held a ceremony to bid farewell to the victims on Sunday. The Israeli ambassador, Nepal's foreign minister, and a survivor of the attack. also attended about 4500 nepali nationals work in israel mostly as caregivers and additionally 265 nepali students are in the country as part of a learning and earning program 1400 bodies in israel we are in the middle of uh, the process of identifying the bodies not all of them were identified not all of the bodies of the nepalis were identified uh, unfortunately today four will arrive and uh, the fifth one will arrive in a day or two we still have five bodies to identify and we will take care this is our responsibility they are our family Moving on in a first after assuming office Sri Lanka's president Ranil Wickremesinghe on Monday reshuffled his cabinet changing the portfolios of two ministers in the minor reshuffle necessitated by the removal of former minister portfolio of Kehliya Rambukwela was changed from health ministry to ministry of environment while industrial minister Ramesh Patirana was given the additional charge of health ministry According to local media reports Rambukwela was removed as health minister following a number of allegations raised against the ministry during his tenure a no confidence motion against him was also brought in parliament by the opposition which however got defeated before change of his portfolio With an intent to challenge norms and champion women's empowerment in motor sports, the first ever women-only autocross event was organized in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir. In a field that has been traditionally dominated by men, women are proving their mettle and have achieved notable success in various racing disciplines over the years. One of the organizers said these women are blazing a trail for others and challenging the status quo, also making significant contributions to the motorsports industry. I'm so excited about seeing so many ladies here. I can't tell you I was overjoyed last night. We had about 35 ladies at the briefing and uh, it's more than we get in Delhi. So <laughs> I was absolutely overjoyed and they're so enthusiastic everybody drives here and it's so beautiful to drive around Kashmir car driving is not just meant for the boys right so we also love driving so if you get a platform platform like this to show up your driving skills as well a platform which takes you to a national championship uh, contendership a podium holder why not And serpentine queues were witnessed outside the famous Taleju Bhavani Temple in Nepal on Monday as it opened its gates for devotees on the auspicious occasion of Mahanavmi. Take a look. Long and meandering queues stretched to all possible corners of Basantapur Darbar Square in Nepal's capital Kathmandu on Monday as the famous Taleju Bhavani Temple opened its gates for devotees on Mahanavmi. Regarded as one of the Shakti Peet in Hinduism, the temple is only opened for public on the ninth day of the Dashain or Dashera festival. The day is also considered as the final day to make ritual sacrifices of livestock to Goddess Durga and her various incarnations during the ten-day-long festival. अब एक वर्ष में एक सूटे ओन पानी मंदिर दे रहे हैं हमरे साथ सभी वक्त जन आ रहे हैं। आइरन भाषा है यहाँ हमें तो छ बजे चालीस मिनट में देखि लाइन बस थे अभी भर्खर यहाँ आईपुग लगभग एक घंटा अराउंड भैस मीन वाइल सीमिलर सीन्स वर विटनेस्ड इन इंडिया एज डेबिटीज थ्रॉंग टेम्पल सिंस अर्ली मॉर्निंग टू पे देर वायसेंस ऑन द नाइन्थ डे ऑफ द नवरात्रि फेस्टिवल डेडिकेटेड टू नाइन डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ गॉड इज दुर्गा Navratri holds immense importance in Hinduism. It is believed that during this festival the goddess descends on earth to rid it of demons and bless her devotees. The festival culminates on the 10th day with Vijay Dashmi marking the victory of good over evil. Well that's all in tonight's edition we'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.